What's up everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video we are checking out oil. We are going to talk about oil, that's right. I'm not talking about a knife today, I'm talking about oil, what's the best oil, and how to use oil on your ballast songs. How much is too much, how much is too little? Let's talk about that. All right, so first up, what is oil? Oil is a great thing that you can buy that allows you to lubricate your ballast song. What does lubricating your ballast song do? Well, it's multiple things. The main thing, of course, is making it swing better. If it's sticking a little bit, you add a little bit of oil and suddenly the thing is going to, you know, feel really, really nice to flip. But the second thing that oil does is, first of all, it, uh, you know, reduces wear on your parts in general. So by having oil on your ballast song, you actually reduce the overall wear uh, that you're imparting on the pivot area while you're flipping. And then, past that feature, you also change the sound of the ballast song with the oil that you use. So depending on the oil and the thickness of the oil and all sorts of stuff, uh, your ballast song will change in sound. So let's practice using some oil right now. So if you listen to this ballast song, this is my Glider Arctic, which we are working on a review for, you'll hear... It sounds pretty good, but it's a little tinny. You hear what I mean? It's a little, it's a little sharp sounding. And so if I just take some of my oil here and apply it, and the best way to do this, by the way, is you can see what I'm going to do is get a tiny drop of oil at the end of my little needle here, and then I'm just going to touch the pivot area. And then I'm going to do the same thing and touch the pivot area, get a tiny drop of oil, touch pivot area, drop of oil, touch the area. Very easy to apply. You don't want to apply too much. You really just need the smallest drop of oil on the end of there, and then you can uh, put it on there. And then you just kind of want to work it into the pivot area a little bit. And if you listen now, It's a bit of a slight difference, but there is, in fact, a difference of uh, sound from before. So now it's a lot more muted, a lot more, you know, nice sounding, personally, to me. I really like the sound of an oiled ballast song. Uh, one question that I get asked a lot is, how often should I oil my ballast song? And for me, that answer is, uh, it depends on how much you flip the ballast song. I flip my ballast songs constantly, all the time, every single day, and so I find myself oiling my ballast songs once every couple days, if not once a day, if I'm really going at it. Um, and so, like, you know, it's okay to oil your ballast song relatively often. That is perfectly fine. But it's also okay not to oil it that often. Really, it's up to you. The main way that you should know, though, whether or not you need oil is by looking at the pivots. If you look at the pivots and you see the shine of some oil uh, still on them, you can tell, oh, this does not need oil, right? So if you, if you have a ballast song that you don't know whether or not it needs oil, well, you can just open it up and look at it, and if you see that it looks kind of dry and you don't see any oil to the naked eye, then I'd be like, okay, this thing maybe could use some oil. And you can especially tell from flipping it, uh, either the sound will, you know, sound kind of tinny and so, and sharp, and maybe you need oil for that, uh, or you'll feel it while you're flipping and it won't feel very smooth, and so that would be another reason to use oil. Um, in here, you can see, you know, I can I can just open up my knives and be like, yeah, yeah, this maybe could use a little bit of oil, but honestly, this one looks pretty good, so... And it sounds pretty good, too. And so that's kind of the way that that works for me, is like, you know, if I, if I think I might need oil, I will apply it to a ballast song, but in general, I'm not too worried about uh, over-oiling them as long as I'm not oiling them, like, all the time. Uh, as long as you're oiling your ballast songs on a, like, reasonable basis and not, like, every 10 minutes or every hour, like that is too much oil. But as long as you're oiling them with only the tiniest drop and you're doing it, you know, in regular intervals, that's fine. Now, let's talk about what oils to use on what ballast song. So as you can see, I have quite the selection of oils here. I have some stuff from KPL, Flippin' Blade Oil. I have uh, Super Lube. I've got some just different selections, Benchmade Blue Lube, all sorts of stuff here. All of these oils are good for different purposes, but my personal favorite in all of them is, of course, 
this. It's Super Lube. You can see I have the full bottle of Super Lube right here. This is what I suggest to anybody looking to buy, and there's a link down in the description. You can get this entire bottle for like $4, and then you can get a whole pack of these little needle dropper bottles for like $5. So you can get a bunch of needle dropper bottles and a whole basically lifetime supply of Super Lube for like less than $20, and suddenly all you have to do is open up your Super Lube and put it into these little bottles, and you could give, not only can you lube all your knives, but you can give some of your bottles that you're making to your friends, and then they can lube their knives, and it just makes everybody happy. So Super Lube is seriously some of the best stuff on the market. It is really, really good lube, and it's really, really cheap. So I love Super Lube. There's t multiple things about it, too, is that it's a fully synthetic oil, and it's food grade. So it's actually, like, if you're going to be lubing a balisong and you want to cut food with it at any point, absolutely make sure that it is a food grade uh, lubricant that you are using. When you look at some of these other lubes, like KPL, for instance, KPL is not food grade, um, and so you are not supposed to uh, put this on a knife that you are going to use with food at all. You can see it actually says on there, not for human consumption. Um, KPL and other lubes are, uh, they're synthetic, but they have uh, certain elements to them that make them either smell different or have different properties. And personally, I just really prefer the 100% pure silicone lube uh, provided by Super Lube. So I use Super Lube on most of my knives, but what do I not use Super Lube on? Well, for most knives, most metal knives, I would absolutely say use the Super Lube. But for stuff like your Squiddy, uh, for the Squiddy specifically, I say don't use any lube. If you can avoid using lube on your Squiddy, you are going to have a much better time. Uh, especially, though, do not use KPL or any of these red lubricants on your Squiddy. The problem is, is that something inside of the KPL, I, I don't know what, uh, it either seems to react with the plastic of the Squiddy, or over time it builds up and gunks up itself inside of the Squiddy. I'm not sure which, but all I've noticed is that Squiddies that are lubed with KPL over time end up locking up and stopping flipping and like stop, they just stop working over time and they get really gunky and then you have to get it fixed and cleaned and stuff like that. And so I don't know. I don't know if the problem is KPL or how it reacts with the plastic or if it's just that it, you know, builds up a gunk in there, but KPL is not my choice. You can use Super Lube on the Squiddy and it will work fine, but you really want to use the smallest possible drop. Like you want to use far less than you would even use for your metal balisong. And the reason for this is just the Squiddy is a very sensitive knife. And because it's so light, right? Um Lube makes your knife swing smoother, yes, but it also actually makes your knife swing slower, usually, because it adds a little bit more surface tension between the uh, bushings and the washers and the handles. And so by adding lube to your knife, if you add too much lube, suddenly you might notice that actually it swings worse than it did before. What's going on there? Well, the answer is because the handles are so light and the blade is so light, the surface tension created from the lube is actually slowing down the swing of the handle more than you would have expected. So. You can use lube on the Squiddy, but do it in moderation and don't use a whole lot. Okay, so now we've talked about the Squiddy, well, what about bearing balisongs? That is a very good question. A bearing balisong is a different kind of animal when it comes to lubrication. You do not want to use any of these lubes on your bearing knives. Um, and the reason for this is that bearings just operate very differently than how other knives do. And so it's important that you use the right kind of lubricant on your bearings. Now, I've talked in the past about how you can use dry lubrication on the bearings, and you can do that. Uh, you can buy what's called graphite powder, uh, or graphite lubricant. And what graphite powder does, is it's a very fine powder made of graphite that you just kind of sprinkle on there. And it'll, it'll go in and, you know, it's a dry lubricant and it will dry out your pivots and lubricate them relatively well. And that's a great option. But personally, I actually prefer this thing right here. And I talked about this in my full collection video, but this is called Dewa Real Oil. Um, this is a fantastic oil that I suggest basically only for bearing knives. And what it does is it's an extremely thin oil that was developed specifically for uh, the bearings on um, like 
fishing reels. So like it was specifically made for fishing reel bearings. So Dewa Reel Oil, there's a link in the description for this. This is absolutely my favorite way of uh, lubricating a bearing knife. And also when you do lubricate a bearing knife, it's a bit of a different process than lubricating other knives. So if I wanted to, for instance, I don't think this guy has been lubricated in a hot minute. And you can hear. It's got a bit of a, a bit of a clack to it that I think could be fixed with some lubrication. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lube this bearing knife. Something to be aware of when you're lubing bearing knives is that bearing knives have way, way more um, surface area inside of them than your bushing knives. Your bushing knives, you barely put, you know, a tiny drop on there and then it gets pulled in using capillary action and that's what um, lubricates the entire knife. Bearing knives, my brain, I could not think of the word for one second. That was weird. Uh, bearing knives have a lot more surface area. You know, they have lots of little balls in there and each one of those needs to be coated with lubrication to do it properly. So when you use a lube like this on bearing knives, you actually wanna be less sparing. So you can see I get a relatively large drop and actually drip that in there and let the uh, let it take over the entire pivot. So you can see I get about a big drop and then I put it in there. And I get another drop. Come on, baby, and put that in there. There we go. And then I do. Then you can just put the tip away. And uh, the Daywa Real Oil comes in these little pen, um, needle pen things. And honestly, this is my favorite way for lube to come because it's just so convenient. It's so nice to have it in a bottle like this, and then you can just apply it, and it's good to go. But my second favorite way, of course, is these guys because they're easily refillable. So I've added the lube, and you can already feel. Oh, listen to that difference. Oh man. That's immediately a substantial difference and it feels really nice to flip. I will say one thing that you need to be careful of, especially if you have a uh, live blade balisong, if you have never added uh, a bearing lube to your bearing balisong and then you do, you will notice a substantial difference, both in the sound because it'll make your balisong a lot quieter, but it'll also make it a lot faster. So be aware that your balisong will suddenly increase in speed by a fair bit. And uh, I think that's a good thing, personally. I really like how fast you can flip on, uh, you know, uh, bearing ballast songs. I think that's one of the uh, features behind them, and I think that's one of the things that makes them very cool. But be aware before you do it that, yes, your ballast song will suddenly flip a lot faster, and so you do need to be aware of that, especially if it's a live blade and you haven't practiced with that before. So, yeah. That is uh, pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to talk about the various lubes. The main two, of course, being the wonderful Super Lube and Dewa Real Oil. And just know if you buy Super Lube, you really do need to buy the little dropper things with the needle tips because this bottle is way too big to actually reasonably apply to your balisong. So you do need the little needle dropper bottle if you are going to get Super Lube. But just know if you buy one bottle of Super Lube, it'll probably last you literally forever. So, you know, there's a, there's a give and take there. Also, by the way, this right here is the uh, worst lubricant you can buy. Don't buy this. Don't put this on your balisong. Uh, it's literally glue. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something because lube is an interesting topic. There's a lot of different lubes out there from a lot of different people. If you have a favorite, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear about the different lubes because it's a topic that I'm always kind of learning about. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. And I will uh, see you guys in the next video. Peace.